Here is the basics of how to use Panzoid Clipmaker in 2025. If you've come across this video from my previous Panzoid video, I'd just like to say thank you for all the overwhelming support that I received on that video. Anyway, without further ado, let's get right into it. So, as you can see, the Panzoid website has been updated. They now have their own AI on there. Um, you can check it out if you want, but of course, today we're going to the Clipmaker. So go to Apps, Clipmaker 2. And to begin with all the basic functions, if you hold left click on your mouse and drag around in this 3D viewport here, this will orbit around the 3D viewport. If you hold click the mouse scroll button and move your mouse up or down, this will zoom in and out. Alternatively, for zooming in and out, you can just use the scroll button as is by scrolling on the button. That will also do the same exact function. And if you hold click the right mouse button, this will move around the 3D viewport. Of course, when you first load in here on the left, you will have these options to choose from different presets. You've got the option for new, this will start a new project. You've got the option to load a project. You've got the option to save your project and you've also got the option to publish a project which will publish it to the public server and then you'll be able to access it just like you can these ones here. So just to show you quickly an overview of how Panzoid works, I'm going to load in one of these projects. We'll just click leave page and then this will load this in. So if you're looking for something really simple, you can load in one of these templates and edit them if you wish to. Or you can create your own and I will of course show you how to create your own. Now we can of course play this back. So to play this back, we can either press the space button on our keyboard or press this little playback button down here. And you can see that it's got a little motion that it's already doing. But we're not really seeing the final video, we're just seeing whatever the hell that is. So to see the final video, you're going to need to switch over to camera view. So to do that, you go down here and press this little eye icon. And now you switched over to the camera view where all of your effects and everything has been applied. And you're of course seeing it from what the camera will see for the final video. And of course, if you really want to, we can go over to new and this will create a new project when we press leave page. So to begin, let's press this little button here. This is where you can set your video resolution, frame rate and length. Now, typically, I think most people would just want to keep it at 1080p. You can go all the way up to 4K and the lowest you can go is 240p. I don't think anyone would be going 240p in this day and age, so just go with 1080p. You can choose between the frame rate of 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. I think 30 frames per second is good for most cases, or if you want to have flexibility with it, such as being able to slow it down, then go with 60 frames per second. And then for the length, this obviously sets the length slash duration of your project. So right now, we've got it set to six seconds. So if we go all the way to the end, you can see it's 5.97. Let's go up to nine and then this will extend this and then it will go to a max of 8.97 slash nine seconds. Next, we have this little scene option. So if you click on this, this will now allow you to choose the environment. So click outdoor. If we click outdoor, you can see that we literally just get an outdoor scene built with clouds. Of course, I've got this one set to cloudy light rays. So we're getting some light rays coming through those clouds. And of course you can select different options such as dark stormy. You can select full moon. So there's quite a few options you can select there, or if you really want to, you can select custom from the bottom. When you select custom, this gives you an option of left, right, top, bottom, front and back images that you can set yourself inside of Panzoid. So to show you, let's just click select. You know what, let's just select this quick little TARDIS image that I have here, and now it's loaded that image inside of Panzoid. So that's the basics of scene. I mean, this land option, you can see this here. If you turn this to flat and terrain, I think it is actually a broken feature right now. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Next up, if you go over to this object mode, this is where you can start adding objects inside of your 3D scene. So let's click add object and you'll see that we have these different options such as shape, text, model, light, particles, group, and custom object. So let's begin with a shape. A shape gives you box, cylinder, rectangle, circle, spear, donut, and wire. Of course, if we had a box in there that gives us a quick little box. We click on the box. We have these small little options here. So we've got the size of the box between the X, Y, and Z dimensions. We've got the position along the X, Y, and Z dimensions. We've got the rotation along the X, Y, and Z dimensions. And then we've got the scale on the X, Y, and Z dimensions. So now let's show you how keyframes work inside of Panzoid. And if you're not sure what keyframes are, they basically just animate a property from one point to another, such as A to B or A to B to C and so on. So of course, with every object inside of Panzoid, you will automatically have keyframes set for them at the very beginning of the timeline, which is reflected by these little colors here that you can see, red, green, blue, and purple. And if you really wish to, you can click a keyframe. So you can hold left click on your mouse and drag this keyframe anywhere on the timeline. I'm just gonna keep that basis one at the start for now. We're just gonna move a little further on the timeline here. 
So now our player head is placed here. We can press the plus icon in this rotation thing to animate the rotation. And you can see that this is now added this keyframe here. So now let's just rotate our object on this keyframe. And you can now see over time, it is now rotating that object. Right now though, it is just given a simple linear motion. So to show you this a little bit quicker, let's just move this back. So now this is a lot quicker and it's doing this simple linear motion. If you really want to, you can click this little icon here. So this from linear to quadratic in and out. And the simplest way to explain how this works, quadratic in and out, slowly goes in, gets faster in the middle and then slows out. And you can see that that's represented by the curves that we have on screen. So if we were to go with cubic in, it would slow in and then get fast out. If we were to go with cubic out, it would go fast in and then slow out. And I think you kind of get the point. So let's go with quadratic in and out. And just make sure when you do that, you go to both keyframes and set it on both. And you can see that it will go slow in, fast middle, slow out. Now we get that smooth animation. And the same goes for this little function here. This switches the interpolation between linear and bezier. So when it's set to linear motion, it will obviously be a very flat A to B motion. When it's set to bezier, it will smooth out those keyframes for you. So let's set it to linear on both of these. And you will see there's like a slight, slight difference. I'll switch it over to Bezier and you can see that looks a little bit smoother. So that's the basics of keyframes inside of Panzoid. If you want to regarding your objects, you can set different textures. So you can set image, metal, wood, brick, alien. You can set a video texture on there. You can also set shockwave. And I think the best and most useful of all is the custom texture, which allows you to not only color your object, but also add a custom texture on there and set different parameters such as a normal map, which gives it bumps and even do some more advanced stuff such as adding reflections to your object. So if we turn on the reflection, you can now see that there is a reflection on that actual object. The same goes for anything else you add inside of Panzoid such as text. So if we add in a text here, this gives us this. Let's just delete our box for now and delete, delete objects from Panzoid. You just click this little X icon next to the item. So when you add text inside of Panzoid, you get quite a few options. You get the font option. It allows you to choose these pre-made fonts or your own custom font. You of course get the ability to change the color of your text. You also get the same options you do with the box. So you can, if you really want to, go to a custom texture and this will allow you to customize every single thing about this text. Now I'm just gonna show you how light systems work inside of Panzoid. So go up to add object, light. You can see a light is pretty simple. It just lights your objects in your scene. So if we go to this light, you can see that we've got quite a few options here. So we've got the intensity of the light that brings up how intense it is. We've got the angle. So this is how wide the actual light is. I'm just going to turn the angle down for now. And also just with anything in Panzoid, instead of having to use these position parameters here to move them, you can also just drag these little handles. So you can drag this, this, and this. I'm just going to drag my light up for now. So it lights my object just a little bit more. And I'm going to bring up the angle so that we just get a wider angle on that. So of course the position moves the actual position of the light, but what does this target do? Well, if we change the target like this, you can see that it changes where the light is looking at, so pretty much the target. And I'm sure that made it pretty clear how the target works inside of Panzoid for a light. So now let's move on to particle systems. So go to add object, go to particles. Ooh, this is spicy. I know you can see we've got particles in here. That's a very interesting look for the particles. So let's click our particles. So of course, we've got the color of our particles. We can change this to anything we want. If we really want to, we can add multiple colors by clicking in different boxes here and just changing that color. So now we've got this mix between red and blue, which creates like a purple color here. You can change the size of the particle colors. So when you change that size, you can see that it's affecting how the particles actually look. And the most important modes I think you're going to want to know about particles, everything pretty much explains itself, such as number of particles and emitter rate. The emitter rate is how much is being emitted over the duration of your project. The particle lifetime, however, this is how long the particles go on for. So if they go on for seven seconds, they will literally animate over that entire period. But if they animate, for example, let's say 0 0.1, it will keep repeating that animation over the course of 0 0.1. So now you're getting this very uh, interesting animation right here. And then to run over the position mode, so currently box just literally gives us a box position. If we scale this up, it looks exactly like a box. We go over to sphere. We're gonna have to bring up its radius here to see what it is. It's literally just a sphere. And if we go over to disc, that will give us a disc. And then the speed mode is what the emitter actually emits from. So it's currently set to sphere. If we bring up our spread to, let's say, 2000, 
this will give us a spherical spread. If we set this over to box, you can't really see much happening here, but if we bring up the speed to, let's say, 800, you can now see that it's moving in a very box-like pattern. So it's giving not only our disc-shaped particles, but it's also containing them inside this box shape. And then you've got the gravity of the particles. So let's say we set this gravity in the middle here to, let's say, 5,000. Let's make it very aggressive. You can see that it now gravitates upwards. If we were to set this to minus 5,000, it will gravitate downwards. And just to show you what the blend modes do, if you go over to normal, you can see it looks like that. If you go over to add, it looks like that. So go with whatever you prefer. And of course, down in texture, you can set custom textures just with anything, or you can change what these particles look like. Let's go with tentacles. And now you can see, well, it's essentially looking like tentacles. That's the basics of your objects inside of Panzoid. There is two more options here, custom object and a model object, but I'm sure you can figure those out by yourself from what I've currently given you. Now let's go over to this button here. This is where you add your effects to your scene. Now this is very specific. You do need to be in camera view to do this, so make sure you press this button to go into camera view. Now that we're in camera view, let's start adding some effects. So let's add, for example, a bloom effect, and you will now see that it's blooming the entire scene. Under pretty much any effect, you can keyframe all the parameters. You can adjust the parameters, obviously make them more intense or less intense. And you've got an array of different effects here that you can choose from. So have a play about with them. This next button here is your camera. This allows you to animate your camera. You can also add shake to your camera. So to show you how this works, let's add in some music by going to this little music button here. Let's go to select audio file. So I selected this quick little baby shark remix here. If we want to see our audio waveform, we'll just click this little button here and we can see that there's a very strong beat here. So let's do a quick little animation by going back to camera. Add a keyframe for the shake. Let's go a few back. Let's add another keyframe for the shake and let's go a few forward, add another keyframe for the shake. Let's do the same for the position. Now let's create a little animation here. Create this little animation for my shake and my position. It's very aggressive. Of course, we can bring down the shake speed to make it less aggressive. So we'll set that to like 2.75. And of course, with shake, you can go into advanced shake settings here, which gives you so many more options. Now, this might look confusing at first, but all it gives you is the X, Y, and Z amplitude, frequency, phase, noise, and interpolation of your shake. So the interpolation is what we discussed earlier. It's literally just these two things here, linear and bezier. So they call it linear and smooth, but it is essentially linear and bezier. Typically, you just want to keep it on smooth anyway. And of course, I'm sure you know what amplitude is. It's, it's the amount of shake that's happening. The frequency is the amount of shake that's happening per second. The phase is the aggressiveness of the shake and the noise is how randomized the shake is. I think probably the most important functions you're really ever going to need is the tilt amplitude. So this can change the amount of tilt that you're having going on with this. Or if you want to just set it to be really simple, you can change the shake mode X, Y from rotate to move. So instead of rotating when it shakes, it will just move just like this. And one last thing, when you're in camera view, you can change this to 3D perspective or the orthographic 2D view, which is very flat. Now let's move further on to the audio because earlier we selected an audio, but I didn't give you much detail about what this does. So under here, you've got the start offset of the audio itself. You can change that forward if you want to chop off the front end of some audio to get right to a different part in the audio. You've got the volume mode, which you can have on fade in or out. If you set that to fade in and out and you bring up the fade in and out parameters, it will fade in from the start of your project and fade out from the end of your project. Or you can go to custom. Under custom, you can then just keyframe the volume parameter as you would with anything else. And then we've got the pan option, which will either pan this to the left speaker or the right speaker. And two more last functions inside of Panzoid. You've got this to mute your audio or unmute it. And then you've got this button to slow down your entire project by half. And when you're done making your amazing projects inside of Panzoid, click this button here and now you can render your video. So if you want to, you can set your quality here. Typically, I would recommend going between balanced or good quality. But if you really want to, you can go for extreme quality. Then you can set your format between MKV and WebM, whatever is most compatible for you. And then just start video render. And now it will take some time to process your video. And once it's done, you will then be able to download your video from Panzoid. And now that my videos are rendered inside of Panzoid, you can just press download your video and this will allow you to download it to your computer. And that's the basics of how to use Panzoid in 2025. If you like this video, of course, click the like button. And if you've got a friend who's confused and doesn't know how to use Panzoid, send it over to them. <laughs> but I hope you all have a good rest of your day and I hope you enjoy using Panzoid.